Okay, hi everyone. So very quick test this because I didn't get a lot of time on this bike, but I got enough to give a good indication what this bike's like and if I think it's a good bike or not. So we're talking about the Yeti 160E. Quick brief overview of that. And I'm gonna put up Yeti's site so you can sort of have a look at the bike here whilst I talk about it. And essentially what we've got here is we've got as a carbon frame bike, full carbon, uh, including the handlebar, based around the Shimano 250 watt EP8 motor, a 630 watt Shimano uh, battery. Build that we tested, including the pedals, came in at 23.1 kilos. We tried the L size. It's got 29 of front and rear, 160 mils of travel. It comes with a Sixfinity uh, suspension platform. Essentially, it's got a rocker link and it's got a lower link which moves and, a, and also a connection between the upper link and the lower link. Uh, a virtual pivot uh, point and a rear suspension system that moves in a slightly different axle path. It's got tunable leverage, so you can actually shift the shock uh, forward and backwards a little bit, and that will change how uh, the bike uh, responds. It gives you a different progression ratio. It comes equipped with a Fox 38 fork on the front, a Fox X2 on the back. We've also got a geometry of 645 uh, degree head angle, a 480 mil reach. I would call it pretty much an enduro setup, actually, when you look at those numbers. It comes with an axis seat post from uh, RockShox, which is amazing, and it feels like it's connected, although it's not. It's got a carbon handlebar, code RSC brakes, which uh, it's got an XT Shimano drivetrain. Now that is quite an interesting choice for the price of bike. Uh, I would expect something a little bit higher uh, in the range from Shimano, maybe an XTR. But that makes me start to think that possibly this bike has been launched and uh, specced according to the components that are available. I don't know about that. But it's got DT Swiss wheels, uh, the H1700s, uh, which are a nice, solid, good wheel set there. And for an extra $900, you can get it equipped with the H1500 uh, carbon wheel set. So but that's an extra $900. Which brings me to the price. This bike retails in the States at $12,700 and plus state tax. I think you're going to be up in the $1,300, uh, sorry, $13,000, $14,000 range. So in Europe, we're talking around $13,000 and something uh, euros. So we're talking a very expensive high end, apart from the rear derailleur, maybe. And maybe you could argue the wheel set could be a bit better. The ride. So the first time I rode it, I didn't spend a great deal of time setting it up, but I did enough just to be okay with it. And immediately sitting on the bike, it feels like a high quality Enduro bike. Uh, you've got a good ride position. I've got quite a long body, that 480 mil reach on the L size. There, bar feels right, bar height, stack, all of that feels good. I didn't really fiddle with the suspension much, fiddling with the rebounds and the compression, and just left it in the middle. So rode up the first climb, which was fairly steep and rocky with some smooth bits, and I was impressed with the ride, because that's where you first start to sort of understand what kind of bike you got the motor is very supportive what i noticed with that rear suspension system and the front actually they, they work together very well i noticed you had a very steady platform so the bike the frame sort of sat there very constantly and steady and you could feel the suspension moving around and you just if you held a fairly constant body position you would find yourself riding along very comfortably climbing over most things without any problem with good traction pretty much all the time the surface i was riding on was with mix between sand uh, mud and uh, rock so it was kind of an interesting surface good lot of variety on that first climb i was impressed uh, no pedal strikes bottom brackets high enough uh, to get you over all of us i got to the top of the hill feeling like i had a powerful machine and prepared for my first descent first descent uh was very interesting at the end of the day i get to ride enough bikes that i can say how they ride pretty quickly within the first few corners. First feeling on the descent was, wow, this is a quality bike. Now, I am not a Yeti fan in the sense of Yeti fanboy. I have no pre preconceived ideas about this. I have interviewed John Parker back in the day as a, you know, it's a famous brand uh, from, from California. It's got that sort of kudos that goes along with being one of the original brands. First corners, first jumps, 
felt a bike that was very precise. Uh, immediately, you felt under control. You felt that steady platform that you still felt on the climb. You could feel it on the descent. The suspension, front and rear, working together very well. There's not very many bikes that have that level of tuning and fe good feeling on that first descent. Obviously had some jumps, corners, all kinds of things going on. Didn't go super fast, first ride. Wanted to just take, take it easy, really. Didn't want to break it. First jumps. One of the overall overruling features that I felt was that bike actually, it was that steady platform feel mixed with quite good agility. And it is a 29 er front and rear, but you couldn't really feel that 29 er uh, rear wheel. It felt more like a 27.5. On the front, yes, it felt like a 29. It felt like you had nice straight line speed, good uh, smooth cornering. It reminded me a bit of the Santa Cruz Heckler. Yeah, did a few big jumps, nice big compression hits. Yeah, suspension remains stable when you land. It's got a very flat feeling, so it, it compresses well. It did feel like, on the descent, like an expensive bike. So the, the most comparable expensive bike that I've tested recently, which felt sort of, it felt in that realm of, was the Specialized Turbo Levo S-Works. Many bikes you test, and you they, they all, a lot of the modern bikes now have good rides, but there's something that was distinguished about this ride that felt that it was just that extra level above, which justified its price. Obviously a Shimano motor, so some people worried about the noise. Now this motor, now I've tested all of them from the very, from the first prototypes up to uh, modern motors. And honestly, this didn't have the rattle on the descents like I was expecting. Uh, it was very quiet. So I don't know if Shimano has been working on this particular motor, but it wasn't that noticeable. That was interesting. So braking was, sharp and good for my uses so the cornering smooth very smooth very maneuverable didn't feel uh, like a 29er to be honest it felt more like a 27.5 mullet always felt like you had great traction yeah you didn't feel like you're risking anything and it's very directional and has great control is it worth it so let's get to a conclusion now because i don't want to go into it much more i think from a build point of view build quality yes the bike is or has a very high build quality don't think it should be shipped with an xt for that price i think it's too expensive for that price with that set and duralia sure that's due to component supply issues at the moment i'm pretty sure i think if you're considering high-end bikes and you want a high-end bike and you want uh the kudos that goes with the brand uh you want a great ride feel where that bike really stays attached to the ground and does pretty much whatever you want to do with it if I was comparing it against to its competitors, you've got a small field of competition. It's definitely should be in that arena. It is one of the quality e enduro trail bikes out there. I don't think it's the best, but it's definitely one of the better ones. So, but we're really splitting hairs at that level because we're dealing with marginal gains. If you are a fan of the Shimano motor system, you'll love it. If you prefer the uh, specialized motor system, then it's a little bit quieter. And yeah, any potential Yeti owner who's expecting the Yeti ride will be completely satisfied with this bike. I think it's gonna be quite hard to get a test bike to actually test before you wanna buy one of those kind of bikes. But if you've got the money and you want a high quality bike and you like the Shimano system, then it's definitely uh, one to consider. And hopefully we'll keep the channel rolling a bit more smoother with a few more uh, videos in the future. I've been a bit slack on that because I've had too many other things to do. But yeah, anyway, thank you very much. And thanks for watching and we'll see you soon.